<laughs> okay. Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner, Nick Classic, Less Known Classic. This is episode number 2557 and double number 2451. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a Batman tray and a Superman tray. First up is Batman Beyond, Backer Beyond. Now, uh, two things about this one. Uh, number one, this actually is the final trade that collects the uh, Batman Beyond... Well, the first Batman Beyond digital series. This is the last trade that collects issues from it. And this is also the second last trade of the Batman Beyond stories. The one set in the animated series continuity. Because I reviewed the next two trades that come after this one, which is the first trade for Batman Beyond 2.0, Rewired, and Justice Lords Beyond. Yes, I've covered these already, so once I view this, I have one left, and then pretty much basically, mostly put in a way, I have mostly covered almost the entirety of Batman Beyond. Like, bless you! Like, the only thing left to go, Batman Beyond, is just, well, the rest of the first, second one, which I'm going to discuss, the first two issues here. And, of course, the original volume for the series. This book collects issues 11 to 18 of Batman Beyond Unlimited. Anna Beach is your writer here. Now, this book, basically, you see the cover, that's Batgirl Beyond. Who is this Batgirl, you might ask? Well, it's a view to the very next series is actually Dick Grayson's daughter. Thinking, really? Yes, really. This is Dick Grayson's own daughter. Uh, do not know exactly why they decided to do this for, but they did. Yeah. So, I guess you can kind of say, runs the family. Yep. Yes, it does. <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, is this the end of the series? No. For Batman Beyond Limited, like, you're probably thinking, what else is there left to go for this Batman Beyond Limited book? Well, I've covered all the Batman Beyond stories once this trade's finished up. There's technically, in a way, like one, two, three. About three more trades left. I'm definitely looking forward to covering the rest of here for this stuff. Yeah, about three more left. And that's it. And then, of course, you got the relaunch stuff, which I'll get to. So, issue 11, which features basically, sadly put, it's revealed in the start of the story for Batman Beyond Unlimited here that Doug Tan. Who is <sighs> formerly the Joker King? Yeah, he dies. Yep, it's revealed in issue fourteen that he dies. Yes, yes, he does. Um, yeah. So it's revealed that the very first issue. Yeah, it's revealed that he died, and that his liver was donated to. Uh, Bruce Wayne, who needed a liver transplant. Now, he, of course, doesn't like the, the the Jokers, but he has no problem with the Tan family. He happily accepts it. No problem. That was a really good story. It's basically the first issue in here, the whole thing with Legend of the Dark Knight, Dinah. This is more like an epilogue to the previous story, like 10,000 Clowns. That's literally what this chapter is. It's literally an epilogue. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. The fact that that's kind of what it that's like uh, yeah, it just just an epilogue. It just just a conclusion. Of course, Diana. Of course, also it's on this issue that Diana finds out that that Terry is Batman. Batman Beyond. And of course, Bruce was the previous Batman, and she accepts it. Yes, she has no problem with it. And then comes the next few chapters. We have a three-parter. We start off with the Undercloud stuff. Yep. That starts with issue number... 15. 
Yep. Under cloud. Yeah, so pretty much basically Undercloud is a hacker group that Oh by the way, the artwork for this storyline here is now by Norm Boffinger. Legend of Batman Earth since Alex has passed away, so the lead at Undercloud once leashes robot. And who this robot is is quite shocking. Yes, so that's your main storyline here. Bruce basically gets to the hospital. Like Commissioner's office. Yes, yeah, go. Or I was like kicking. <laughs> it's so funny. So the basically that's the thread of the, of the story. Like, of course, Shriek is here too. Of course, Shriek is back. Of course, he is. So, and the robots unleashed. Yep. Yeah. Then apparently, it looks like that. I look like Dick Grayson is sleeping with a cat burglar. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, so apparently Dick uh slept with a cat woman. I, despite the fact he had, well, <laughs> boy, the whole thing with Dick Grayson in this timeline is really weird. Yeah, so, yeah, and then they finally unveil who the robots are. It's split up into five different robots, and then it's revealed in the next set of issues who these robots are. They are, it, well, after some quick Richard Gordon stuff, and then they finally unveil who they are. It's the Metal Men! Yep, making their first DC enemy of his parents. Yes, the Metal Men. I thought, this is interesting. Yes. Yeah. Who would have thunk, basically, that... Adam beats you with bringing the metal men. Yeah, the alloy. Yeah, it's actually the metal men, which this kind of in a way is their first ever appearance in a DC anime universe. Yes, seriously. Oh yeah, and they and of course when Bruce meets up with them later, uh Will Magnus is apparently dead. Yeah, he's dead. So yeah, basically, they're offered a former satellite that was ran by the Injustice Gang of all people. Yes, the Injustice Gang. As their base of operations. Yep. Which, by the way, this particular base never appeared in the show at all. They appeared a few times, mostly as an as Earth base that Lex Luthor had. Yes, seriously. Uh, I thought the whole thing with, with the Metal Men and stuff was so awesome. Who would have thunk, though? The frickin' Metal Men. Oh, yeah, and then the final issue, it's revealed that we have a new Batgirl. Her name is Nissa. I thought she was Dick Grayson's daughter. My mistake. Yeah, she, she 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 basically in a way only appears in one issue. Now some of you ask the question, Nick, why in the world do they have books called Batgirl Beyond yet she only appears in one issue? Well, because the book ended right after that. Mm hmm The main storyline with the whole undercloths are wrapped up with issue number seventeen. 
yeah, it didn't last very long, but I thought it was quite interesting. I love the whole storyline with this. Undercloud was, and of course, under, like Bruce, like, oh, I'm gonna show Like, nah, let's just repurpose this. I'll be more nicer. Like, okay. Not a bad idea, using the resources for good instead of whatever basically they wanted to do. And also, the whole thing with Undercloud is that they wanted to, they wanted to tear down Gotham City, and they accused the police of protecting the rich instead of basically, you know, protecting the public. Which, in the case, uh, that's from a mild point of view, especially since basically Commissioner Gordon, the current Commissioner Gordon, the Barbara Gordon, yeah... But this book, which is pure awesome as its finest, I love this book. I give this book a 10 out of 10. Yep. Um, but since it's the end of the digital comic, the first digital comic series of Batman and Beyond, uh, final thoughts? Really fun series. Uh, I do recommend it. It's only about collecting three trades. There is, overall, for these particular digital chapters, first there is... 10,000 clowns, and then this is one. Yeah, only two, which is interesting to say the least. But for some reason, I'm not sure why this is. Apparently, Volume 3 is not counted for this continuity, so they decided to be not canon for reasons. I don't know. Uh, but good book overall. I love this run for Batman Beyond. Now, of course, I'll be back to Batman Beyond when I talk about Mass Phantasm book. Next up, we have Superman, the power within. Excuse me. Which collects Action Comics 601 to 641 and 658. Superman, Volume 2, number 48. And The Avengers of Superman, number 6, 7, uh, 471. The first question you're asking, Nick, why the heck does this collect like about 42 comic books? Well, there is an explanation for that. Okay, so for some reason, after issue 600 with issue 601, Action Comics became weekly for a period of almost one year. And first question you might and next asking, okay. Uh, next question. Was Superman still featured in Action Comics period of time? Yes, he was. On two pages. Really? Yes, really. Mostly put, basically, DC wanted to go back to the old classic anthology -like concept for Action Comics. Having about four or five stories... Superman only appears for just a couple pages because they probably had to appear in the book because editorial mandate. Now, mostly put the the one one there was one feature that actually lasted out the entire run, all forty one issues, and that feature was Green Lantern. Yep, Green Lantern. Yep. In the case of the Green Lantern one. That one, in a way, picked up right after uh, Green Lantern Corps 224. Yeah, which at the time was the final issue of the first five of the series. So, these are you had in the opening issue. Of course, you have the Superman issue, obviously. Yes, the source of course, Green Lantern, Wild Dog, Secret Six. No, God, not Gail Simone's Secret Six. It is the second version of Secret Six. It's a, it's a sequel story to the original series back in the 60s. Yep. So, we had, like, various characters. And by the way, this book was 48 pages. Now you're thinking, 48 pages. No, that, that nowadays would be equivalent to a $5 comic book. That would be true. But this is 1988. And do you know how much the comic apparently cost at the time? $1.50. Nowadays, it costs 3 to 5 bucks. And here's something quite interesting, though. Uh, I have read the Blackhawk feature already, so I'm not going about that one. But yeah, some of you might be asking: Is any air feature for this run in trade? 
I believe that, oh yeah, there's also a feature for uh, Nightwing in the book. Yeah, his features got clean trade. There's also the Catwoman one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, Wild Dog, nope. He is not collecting a trade here. Yeah, so... Yeah, Green Lantern, Dead Man, Wild Dog, Secret Six, and Blackhawk. The other features that were in the book for when it was weekly. It was also a Catwoman one. Yep. By the way, all the stories in this book for Superman, it's all written by Roger Stern. Yep. Now, next question you might be asking. Okay, who are the Green Lantern one? Christopher Priest. Yep. Uh, next question. What was the first issue that changed the lineup of the book? Because, because you mentioned the whole thing with uh, Nightwing Catwoman being the book. Okay, I'm looking up right now of uh, when in the world the feature was changed. Now, the Wild Dog feature was not collected in trade. Now, Wild... Okay, so... It's issue 608. That's when it freshly changed. Where they added Black Canary to the series. Yep, we're on the cover of the book. She's burning her costume from Tetra Comics. And going back to the classic look. Yep. And then issue 610, we had a Phantom Stranger story. Uh, take the place of Blackhawk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the Catwoman one, that came in issue 611. Mm -hmm. Now, the Nightwing one. And he occasionally also came with Arsenal in the book. Yep. Excuse me. I'm looking up right now.
Okay, the Tin Roof Club. Uh, it started. It's only just a four issue run. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing a trade for it. Excuse me. Not me joining the series with issue number six fifteen. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, so mostly put in the case of the Superman one, it's mostly him being worse as a god, and it's just this white cover eighty. It feels has sort of the feeling of a Bronze Age story, kind of. But I thought the story arc was really good. As for six fifty eight, uh, it's for excuse me, six fifty eight Superman book and Superman, but Superman. That was a part of the Sinbad contract storyline. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sinbad contract. You're thinking, what the heck is a Sinbad contract? Well, it was a three-part story arc. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that uh, started with issue, six, uh, issue 48. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I started. This is done by William Messer Lowe, but Kurt Swan in the artwork. Sinbad is is a terror is a guy is a kid who people think is a terrorist and he's here for just for this well he's here for this very brief story arc and then he it makes his last known appearance in Superman the Legacy of Superman number one it was a one shot released in uh, 1983 but that was like the like last trade he was featured in. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so basically for Nightwing, it's called Nightwing Old Friends New Enemies. That covered, well, the collective Secret Files and Origins book, Secret Files book, plus issues 613 to 634 of Action Comics. I could have sworn it was a Catwoman one. I know that Black Canary never had her feature collected. No, Blackhawk did. Mm -hmm.
I'm looking it up. I, I could have sworn there was one for Catwoman. Excuse me. Weird. Anyways, basically, it's a good trade here. I give this book roughly a 10 out of 10. Okay, so that's see pretty much it to give you. Uh, next up is going to be, well, next up is going to be Spike Stanley, and that's definitely going to happen tonight, okay? Thanks, Boo.